Okay, in this video we're going to talk about some inverse trig functions and doing compositions that involve them, uh, which sometimes people find a little complicated, uh, mostly because of like domain and range issues, I think. So the first question we'll look at is the sine of the inverse sine of negative 5 over 18. So uh, the easiest way to deal with this problem is to really think about what this problem is saying. So what we're looking for here is the sine of an angle. So we're looking for the sine of an angle, and if you think about what inverse sine of negative 5 over 18 means, uh, negative 5 over 18, I should say, um, it's, this question is saying, find the sine of an angle um, whose sine is negative 5 over 18. So think about that. We're looking for the sine of an angle whose sine is negative 5 over 18. So the answer to this question is just negative 5 over 18. You can kind of deal with all of the um, compositions that involve uh, you know, the normal trig function on the outside and the inverse trig function on the inside in a, in a similar fashion. Um, so more interesting questions are when you uh, have the reverse, you have the inverse function on the outside. So let's take a look at a problem like that. So we want to find the inverse sine of the sine of 7 pi over 6. So I'm going to do this in a, uh, in a, in a weird way. Um, that's more applicable to general problems, and then I'll do it in a more direct way. So the first thing I'm going to do is, I see inverse sine, so I'm going to draw the half of the unit circle that I'm allowed to think about. So I'm only allowed to think about quadrants 1 and 4, um, and the angles that I'm allowed to think of only go from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So I have a problem here because 7 pi over 6 is not in that range. So uh, 7 pi over 6 is over here, so let's start thinking about it. Um, 7 pi over 6 is actually in quadrant 3, which means that the sine of 7 pi over 6 is going to be negative. Um, and if that's the case, then what I really want is I want an angle that's in quadrant 4 to be my final answer, because uh, in quadrant 4, sine is negative. Uh, so now I need the reference angle. So 7 pi over 6 has a reference angle of pi over 6. So I want the angle in quadrant 4 that has a reference angle of pi over 6, and uh, if you're dealing with arc sine, since you have to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, our only option is this angle, which is negative pi over 6. So the answer to this question is negative pi over 6. Now, there's a more direct way to do this particular problem, because I actually know the sine of 7 pi over 6. Um, so it's a little bit easier, because I have everything memorized. Um, really, this question comes down to finding the inverse sine of negative 1 half, because I know the sine of 7 pi over 6 is negative 1 half. And I memorize that the inverse sine of negative 1 half is negative pi over 6. So that's a more direct way of doing this particular problem, but as you'll see in the next problem, that method won't always work. So uh, let's take a look at another problem. So here I want the inverse cosine of the cosine of 23 pi over 12. I do not know the cosine of 23 pi over 12, so now I have to do more work. So I'm going to do this the way that I did um, the previous problem the first way. So first the part of the unit circle I'm allowed to think of, since it's inverse cosine, I can only think of quadrants 1 and 2, um, and my answer will have to be between 0 and pi. Um, so 23 pi over 12, I have to figure out where that is, so I'm going to mark this up as 0 pi over 12, 6 pi over 12, 12 pi over 12, 18 pi over 12, and if I kept going, I'd get to 24 pi over 12, which is 2 pi. Uh, so I know that 23 pi over 12 is somewhere in the fourth quadrant, so it's right there. So now let's answer those questions. So 23 pi over 12 is an element of the fourth quadrant, which means that the cosine of 23 pi over 12 is a positive number because cosine is positive in that quadrant. So what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for an angle um, in the first quadrant because that's where cosine is positive um, in the range of arc cosine. So I'm looking for a first quadrant angle. Now I need a reference angle that I can work with. So 23 pi over 12 has a reference angle of just plain pi over 12, which you can kind of see, right? It's 1 pi over 12 short of 24 pi over 12, um, which is how I found that. So the answer that I'm looking for here is actually just pi over 12, because in the first quadrant, the reference angle is the same as the angle. Um, but this could have been a little more complicated. So let's, uh, let's look at one that's similar and uses the same picture. Um, what if I wanted the inverse cosine of the cosine of 17 pi over 12? So I need this picture again, and then 17 pi over 12, you can see, is between 12 pi over 12 and 18 pi over 12, so it's somewhere in the third quadrant. So if I answer these two questions, 17 pi over 12 is an element of quadrant 3, therefore the cosine of 17 pi over 12 must be less than 0 because cosine is negative in the third quadrant. So cosine is negative in the second quadrant as well, so I'm looking for a second quadrant angle. Now I need a reference angle. 
So 17 pi over 12 has a reference angle of 5 pi over 12, right? It's 5 pi over 12 past pi. Um, so I need the angle in the second quadrant that has a reference angle of 5 pi over 12. So I'm looking for that angle. So in quadrant 2, to get that angle, I'm going to do pi minus the reference angle. So the answer to this question is 7 pi over 12. Um, so that's how I would do these. Uh, I'm going to do one more problem that's a little more complicated, but um, is interesting. So here it is. I want to find the inverse sine of the cosine of 11 pi over 8. This is trouble because uh, I'm not trying to do the sine inverse of the sine of something. I'm trying to do the sine inverse of the cosine of something. So what I need to do is I need to change cosine into sine. The easiest way to do that is to use co-functions. So let's do that. The cosine of 11 pi over 8 is equal to the sine of pi over 2 minus 11 pi over 8, which works out to the sine of negative 7 pi over 8. Um, so I don't really want to work with the sine of negative 7 pi over 8, just personal choice. So I'm going to use coterminal angles. And the sine of negative 7 pi over 8 is equal to the sine of negative 7 pi over 8 plus 2 pi. So this is going to give me a positive angle, and I would just kind of prefer to work with that. Um, so I get the sine of na uh, 9 pi over 8. So now I'm trying to do this problem. The sine of the sine inverse, rather, of the sine of 9 pi over 8. And now I'm doing a problem that I'm familiar with. So I think of the part of the unit circle I'm allowed. Uh, 9 pi over 8 is definitely a little past pi. Um, 9 pi over 8 is an element of quadrant 3. Therefore, the sine of 9 pi over 8 is going to be less than 0. So I now know that I'm looking for an angle from quadrant 4, because that's where sine is negative in the range of arc sine. Um, and I need a reference angle. So 9 pi over 8 has a reference angle of just plain pi over 8. And so the answer that I'm looking for here is negative pi over 8. But it's always nice to kind of summarize. Uh, so in terms of the original problem, the sine inverse of the cosine of 11 pi over 8 is actually negative pi over 8. Um, okay, so I hope you found this helpful, and uh, good luck.